Hello everyone. In a previous video, I talked about a couple of the different options that you have for using a computer and a monitor with your Avid CNC router, or specifically how to kind of mount them or use them in conjunction with the router. And at the end of the video, I basically concluded that the machine arm was the ultimate solution for me and probably the best solution out there, period. And so in this video, I'm going to talk about my own custom machine arm that I made for my Avid CNC router. This is just a prototype, but in this video, we're going to go through and build the final iteration. Yeah and um, I'll show you how I did that, show you all the parts and all that good stuff. So let's start with just kind of a brief overview of the arm and what it is, then we'll look at the actual pieces and then we'll build up the thing. So let's get started. Essentially, the machine arm is just a way to get the monitor more at eye level. Since you're generally going to be standing while using the CNC machine, you kind of want that monitor to be eye level, and you also want it to be movable because this thing is relatively large. You want to be able to put the monitor exactly where you want it to go. So the whole thing is on this swing mechanism with these two hinges, and then the monitor itself has a bit of a pivot here. The other benefit that this has is wire maintenance. You can see all of the wires down there and some of those are kind of excessive because I'm trying some different lengths out and things like that but getting all of these wires tidied up and cleaned up is the other goal for this and then thirdly we have this extrusion which we can attach different things to I can have tools attached this my vice handle maybe some other things there's just a lot of attachment points here so that is an added benefit as well the whole thing is generally constructed out of the 8020 extrusions that are used on the machine itself so this is the 40 by 80 millimeter profile and then the hinges themselves are 3d printed so that's pretty much all there is to it and this can be mounted to either side of the machine doesn't really matter it's just the wires might need to be a different length or run in a different configuration depending on where you have it so uh, let's take a look at the hinge mechanisms first so here is the first version of the hinge I have a um, second version that's the final but I was just kind of showing you this to give you a better idea I had the idea for this a long time ago, but I thought that you would have to machine all of these out of aluminum and this whole hinge would have to be metal. And so I kind of avoided doing the project. And one day I'm just like, you know what? I'm gonna try 3D printing this hinge just to see if it works out. And lo and behold, the 3D printed hinge worked a lot better than I expected. It still has some changes that need to be made, but this was actually really decent. It's pretty self-explanatory here. You basically have this piece that sits on the upper right extrusion. I have these um, nice little um, features on the back of it that will key into the slot so that the hinge really won't pivot. And then we have the top piece that sits like that. And you can see all the attachment points. Um, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. So it really holds on to the extrusion. And this is actually the arm that comes out from that. The old version of this really didn't use any bushings or any bearings. So we're actually just running through, there's just a 3 8 through hole that goes through both of these components. And you can see we're getting quite a bit of wear. I've only been using this for, I don't know, like two weeks or something. And you can see it's starting to wear down a little bit. It's not bad, but you do have these two surfaces sliding against each other and all the weight is being held on these two flat surfaces. So you are gonna get some wear. So for version two, I decide to add some bushings. So here's the second version of the hinges. Um, they remain pretty much the same. There's a couple little tweaks in the sizes, like this got a little bit narrower, things like that. But now you can see that we have these oilite bronze bushings that are pressed inside each one of the hinge pieces. So what we do is we use one of these um, oilite bronze um, thrust washers that goes in between. These are recessed just a little bit below the surface. That sits in there. That one kind of finds its way. And then now we have these two surfaces that actually pivot on the bronze bushing onto the thrust washer, thrust washer onto the bronze bushing. And then this whole stack is compressed with a shoulder bolt. So everything is just kind of a lot tighter and a lot cleaner. So let me just put this in there. That goes in there. 
that slides through and now we can just use the lock nut on the back side and this is a lot smoother. I wish you could feel this on camera but this is a really smooth mechanism and you can see we even have a little bit of a gap here. I think it's like 20 thou is about what I left so any kind of sagging or anything like that which actually it's really hard to even get it to compress here. Any sagging, you wouldn't have the plastic on plastic rubbing. Um, so you basically have an all metal path going through this whole thing. And the shoulder bolt actually helps kind of keep everything aligned and keep things from sagging. Before I start assembling the frame, I just want to give you a couple quick notes about the 3D prints themselves. Um, I have both a Prusa Mini and a Prusa i3 Mark 3S, and these were printed, I don't know, on both of them. Um, I printed them at the same time. They were printed like this, so there is some support needed in this little pocket or this little lip, and you can see this one has the support material still on there, just to give you an idea what that looks like. I need to chip that away. And this one has the support material removed. I have these set pretty tight, so this doesn't just flop in there. It actually takes a little bit of um, pressing. I think an arbor press um, was how I attached those previously. But since they are printed in this vertical direction, that means we're having the layer lines like this so it has the maximum strength and we can do little features like this because if we printed it like that we wouldn't be able to get those features so yeah they're printed vertically like that and no other real special settings just 15 percent infill these are very lightweight maybe only about 100 grams a piece the hardware is significantly heavier than these plastic pieces and now it's time to cut all the extrusions on the bandsaw. You don't have to have a bandsaw for this. Um, I've cut extrusions like this on a table saw before. It's a little scary and definitely makes a huge mess, but it is definitely doable. If you don't have a bandsaw and you don't have a table saw, you can definitely cut this by hand with just a basic hacksaw. If you don't have hands, then maybe you could uh, order these extrusions custom cut to length. Um, there are always options for you. Now it's time to assemble the frame. The frame consists of four pieces. We've got this long 60 inch piece in the back. We've got two 24s and then this 16 inch cross member. These uh, 24 inch pieces have the little pockets like that. This is actually one of the table cross members that's just cut directly in half and it already had these pockets in it. So these slide in like that, like that. Um, this piece is just there to stiffen it, and then this is where the monitor and everything else is. This piece could be a little bit longer or shorter depending on preference. I'm like 5 foot 8, and I found that 60 inch seems to work out okay for me. So um, yeah, that's about all there is to it. Let's get this all assembled. Assembling this frame is pretty straightforward. If you've done any of the assembling on the Avid CNC itself, it's pretty much the same stuff. Just align everything, tighten, rinse, repeat. In terms of lengths of the extrusions, the 60 inches variable, the 16 inches variable, and the 24 inch variable, um, you can kind of change these up depending on what you have on hand, what you can find, what you can cut. The only thing that you need to pay attention to is the two 24 inch pieces, whatever length you end up making those, they have to be the exact same length. The hinges need to hit in the exact same spot. So get these as close as you can. And that's why I'm kind of fiddling with this a little bit, just to make sure that they're, um, I guess, parallel to each other. And when I lay them down into the hinges, they are along that same axis of rotation. So you can make this a little bit longer if you want the arm to kind of swing out a little bit further, or you can definitely make it shorter. I think I originally had this at 16 inches and it was just a little bit too claustrophobic and tight into the machine. I found that 24 was about right for me, but all of this is adjustable. The 16 inch upright is just kind of there for a little bit of extra added stability so you don't get like a torsion bending in the uh, machine arm if that makes sense and that can actually be a little bit longer or a little bit shorter. I made it a little bit shorter just so I don't hit the underside of the gantry when it moves to the very front of the machine.
And the last thing that needs to be done with the frame before it gets mounted up is I am going to be tapping all of the ends of the exposed extrusion. And you'll see this a little bit later, but I wanna have them tapped so one, I can either put on these nice little decorative end caps or I can use them for further wire maintenance or other things. And it's just a lot easier to tap them now than it is once everything is all mounted up. If you're still using straight fluted taps and doing things by hand, you might want to check out getting a high quality set of spiral flute taps. You can literally do this M8 in aluminum in, I don't know, literally seconds. It's like five or 10 seconds per hole and you can just do it by hand with a hand drill. It is so much easier. I don't understand why they still make straight flute taps. The spiral flute is the way to go. So I'm over on the right hand side of the machine and I have both of the um, pieces of the hinge mounted. They're pretty self-explanatory. This one actually just bottoms out at the bottom of the channel. And then this one is just whatever that distance is above it. I think it was like 17 and three quarters, something like that. We'll be adjusting this top one later. This one will sit all the way down and then we'll just kind of butt this one up against the bottom of the other hinge. The other thing that I'd like to point out since I'm over here is the controller. You might notice that it's actually pushed a little bit further back and it has this little piece right here that extends it out. Normally this attaches right here, but that is right in the way of our hinge. And I played around with this quite a bit, had this hinge all the way down low, had the hinge up high. This is really the best spot for the hinge and unfortunately this mounts right there. So all I did is make this little 3D printed extender. Um, it's actually all pocketed out in the back and so it connects um, into the side of the extrusion right there with a um, pocket screw that goes in this way and then it connects into the controller right there. So it basically just helps us extend out, I think about six inches so that we get clearance for the um, machine arm to mount. And that's about all there is to it. Let's um, go ahead and drop the frame onto these two hinges. It was a little tricky to drop this down onto the hinges, uh, mostly because it's actually relatively heavy at this point and you have to make sure that you don't um, knock the thrust washers out of place. So you gotta kind of, you know, gently lay it down on top and, and that was a little bit tricky, but it took like a minute or two. And then uh, once that was done, I just um, tightened up the lock nuts and um, that's about it. Okay, so the arm is installed and it swings very freely. We can actually adjust the tension just by um, tightening these up a little bit top and bottom. I'm gonna leave it like this for right now, but it's extremely smooth and you know, kind of swings the full range of motion without any issue, so that's nice. Um, also very sturdy, I'm actually putting all of my weight on this on the other end and yeah, it's pretty strong. So um, the only other thing that I want to do right now is I don't like these exposed screw heads. So I 3D printed these little caps that just kind of sit on top. That'll clean it up, makes it look a lot nicer and more finished. And um, the nuts on the underneath side are just not really visible. So that's not a big deal. I'm not gonna worry about that. Just kidding. I have little caps for them too. So these are just little press fit and they just press fit on and it just kind of makes it look a little bit more finished. So yeah. I don't want to go into a lot of details on this piece, um, but this is also 3D printed as well. This um, whole mount is 3D printed and yes, my 3D printer has been getting a lot of use lately has these two screws to hold it in the channel so you can adjust the um, height of it pretty easily. And it's just a Visa 75 mount. And there's actually washers sitting in between each one of these joints on both pieces. So those washers are actually what your 
riding against. So it's actually quite smooth. And then there's a lock nut press fit in the bottom of this. So by just adjusting this top bolt, you can actually adjust the tension very easily. And you can go from really smooth to, um, you know, it takes two hands to move this thing around. So uh, this mount is down in the description as well with all the other files for everything else. So now that the monitor is mounted, it's time to do something with the computer. This is just an old Dell Optiplex. I really like these for this purpose because they're relatively inexpensive. I like the form factor and they have a ton of USB connections. So I'm just gonna put this um, underneath the table somewhere, maybe like over here. The only thing I really need to access on this is the power switch, which is over here on the right hand side. So I'll just make it so I can kind of press the power switch like that. And I'm gonna be mounting this with, you guessed it, 3D printed brackets. These will just sit on the underneath cross members, just like that. And I'll have one, two, three, four, just holding this in place. So it should be really simple. I'm not gonna film this because it's just in the weird, awkward location. So let me get that all mounted up. So now all that's left to do is some wire maintenance. And you guessed it, I have some 3D printed parts for wire maintenance. So where the wires come out of the monitor, I have this little piece which um, clips around the channel like that. It has um, little notches right there for the wires to kind of come in and then it has other little notches that align with the channel and then some screw holes on the side so you can secure it in place because the wires are pretty bulky and they will want to kind of push this up and down. So that is where the wires come out of the monitor. And then next we have the um, joint, a uh, little L I guess. Um, this goes in there so the wires kind of come through and you can see that this little snap feature is actually elevated so that when it sits in the channel, actually it sits in the channel like that, the wires can actually come in this side, go through and then go out and it doesn't interfere with them whatsoever. So down from the monitor through here and then out the back of the channel with this piece. So this sits on the end cap, as you can see with these two pieces, sits right there. The wires come down through the channels up inside of here and then out this hole. So that is on the swivel arm. And then on the machine itself, I have this piece, wires come out, go through this hole, and then this goes out into the underside of the machine. And this little radius channel allows for that wire loom to kind of just sit inside the channel like that. Nice and simple. For the cable bundle coming out of the arm, I use this TechFlex stuff, which is an expandable um, nylon sleeve that you can just kind of wrap the cables around. It just gives a really nice finished look, and I just kind of added the zip tie just to hold everything in place, and it just looks nice and clean when it's done. And finally, the last and final step is to add this wire cover into the channels where the wire runs. I got this through Zorro.com. There's a model and everything down below in the description. It is a um, wire cover made specifically for the 4D series channel. It just kind of a um, little rubbery and it just kind of press fits into the channel and completely hides everything. So it leaves a really, really clean look when you're done. It's a little bit finicky to mess with, um, especially with this many wires. Um, I have the the biggest and the smallest wire in one channel, which is the power cord and the audio cable, and they just barely fit into a channel. They have to be arranged just right to get them in there, but it does end up covering it up. So I think I'm going to officially call this done. Well, at least as done as it's gonna be for this video. There's still a couple other little things that I wanna tweak and add. Um, I don't really have a keyboard mount, things like that, but I can add that later in a separate video to get you back to my channel and watch more content. Um, but I'm very pleased with the way it turned out. It moves extremely free, but not too much like, um, if the machine is off balance, it's not gonna move on its own or anything like that. This moves very nicely. The monitor pivots without a problem. And if you just want it out of your way, you can just kind of push it, bring it back, and it is exactly where I need it to be. The other thing that, come on, let's give a little bit of credit where credit is due. The fact that it is completely clean. There's just no wires whatsoever. You can look down on the ground over there, all of that mess of wires is completely gone. Everything is just kind of tucked up underneath the machine. And because this bundle kind of goes through this little um, port in the side, we can go all the way parallel with the machine like that, and then all the way over and the wires are just completely taken care of. So this goes flush with the machine. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I did actually add a little bumper 
down here into the frame. And then I added two other bumpers against the side of the frame right there. So it will kind of stop when it gets to the end of travel. And then, you know, same thing over here. And this will just kind of be the storage, the way that I just kind of keep it when I'm not using the machine. I can just kind of swing this open and do whatever I'm going to do. So yeah, pretty happy with how this came out. The 3D printed hinges were basically just meant to be a prototype, but they ended up being okay. We'll see how they work long term, but all of the weight and all of the wear is going to be on those bushings. So I really don't expect to have any issues with that. And, you know, I'm moving this thing as much as I can. It's, it's pretty sturdy. It does wobble a little bit, um, but that's really just the inherent nature of the aluminum extrusions. It's two feet off of the machine, and this beam right here is about 70 inches. So, you know, it's relatively large. It's gonna wobble a little bit, but that's really not that big of an issue. And it is, um, I guess, fixed enough to where you can use the touchscreen without pushing it away just fine. I mean, I'm pressing pretty hard. So yeah, overall, very pleased with how this turned out. So I think that's about it for this video. I'm probably gonna be revisiting this project when I do like a keyboard holder. I'm probably gonna have other little tool holders on here. I still don't have a way to hold my um, corner probe or I just got a new touch probe. I don't really have a good way to hold those or my pendant. So, you know, I'm gonna be figuring out how to kind of integrate these into the setup eventually as well. So be on the lookout for that. All the links, all the files, everything associated with this project are down below in the description. So go ahead and feel free to go crazy and build your own, modify it, and do whatever you're going to do with those files. As always, thanks for watching. Check me out on my Facebook page for any updates to my channel, and I'll see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.